Hi everybody, it's a pleasure to have today Donatello Conte. Donatello received his PhD in uh, 26 in collaboration with the University of Lyon and Salerno. He has been assistant professor from uh, 26 to 2013 at the University of Salerno and from 2013 he is actually an associate professor in the computer science laboratory at the University of Tours. And right now he's also head of the computer science department at the Polytech uh, Tour School of Engineering. His main research fields are structural pattern recognition, so graph matching and graph kernels, video analysis, and affective computing. Please, Donatello. Thank you. Thank you. So, first of all, thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me. So, I am a member of a pattern recognition and image analysis team in the computer science laboratory of Tour, and I, I will present you some past works and some new, new direction we are taking for the, this topic. <clears throat> so let me start with the classical uh, categorization of uh, pattern recognition. Uh, so we know that uh, there are two main, uh, two main categories in pattern recognition, statistical pattern recognition and structural pattern recognition. And we will see that now is less less separated. Now, now there are many uh, fusion methods that fuse statistical and structural pattern recognition, but uh, in the early uh, 19 and uh, in the early uh, use of this, uh, this um, topic, uh, the, the field was, uh, was quite separated. So what is the idea in statistical pattern recognition? Data are represented by, uh, are ty typical represented by vector. And so uh, here there is um, just some example, but the idea is all data, even image, video, and so on, are represented by uh, uh, Euclidean vector and with <coughs> in a Euclidean space, uh, use some um, classical tools like SVM or uh, neural networks to, to classify data. In, uh, <coughs> in structural pattern recognition, the idea is to uh, use structured data. So the idea is to have some primitive and some relation between primitive. So uh, there is no, not only vector representation of data, but also relationship between, between data. And there are many many structural representation. When, when we know or we talk about structure, uh, we think about graphs, but there are many, there are many strings are also so structural uh, data. Uh, and uh, also there are some other, uh, other type of, uh, of st uh, structural data like graphs, obviously, but also hypergraph and for example, also maps. I, I will show you some example of this, uh, this kind of uh, uh, structure. Uh, so the idea, uh, the basic idea is because uh, there is always some relationship between data. So or, or in a, uh, one dimension or B dimension or can be also in three dimension and, and so on. So the idea is the, the, the use of this kind of relation in, in a machine learning tool. And why we use graphs or other structure? Because in in real world, in fact, we we have structure representation. Uh, it's not only um, in, not only uh, statistical, so vectorial representation. And in fact, when we want to use some data in a vector uh, manner, uh, we have to transform some data in, in vector. In, uh, otherwise, in a structure uh, pattern recognition, we can use, sometimes there is a directly representation in, 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 in terms of, uh, uh, of uh, graphs or other structure. Typical example are networks, for example, uh, networks, uh, uh, social networks, or, or, or other, or physical networks, uh, uh, or, or, for example, so in the chemical, chemical uh, domain, uh, molecule or other kind of uh, uh, compounds are, uh, are directly represented by graphs. 
So the idea is to, uh, to use this kind of representation that is more, uh, more explainable uh, for data. Actually, for other kind of data, like images and, uh, and video, it is less obvious to, to use graphs. And in fact, one, one of the, one of the problems in computer vision is how to represent vision data uh, by graphs or by other structure. Uh, so because there is, there is no unique representation. This is one of the, uh, the problems uh, when, uh, when uh, we want to use structural pattern recognition in computer vision. So, and uh, also, um, we, don't lose, we don't lose vectorial representation because uh, when you use graphs, for example, graphs are attributed. So in uh, nodes and edge, there are also, uh, we can add some vectorial data. So uh, when you use this uh, uh, structure like graphs, we don't want to use only topological information, so relation between data, but also in each data we can, uh, we can, use, uh, we can use any kind of uh, attributes. So uh, this is the, here there is the classical definition of a graph. A graph is a set of vertices and uh, a, a set of edges. The edges are the uh, relationship be with, be between nodes, but also there is two function that uh, associate each vertex in a label, and the label is generical, it can be symbolical data or statistical data, so, and, and also uh, a mixed, um, a mixed uh, uh, a set of, of statistical and some symbolic data, and also we can have also attribute on edge. So uh, the representation is very rich, and so, in, so for, this, uh, for this reason, we, we, we won't use this because we have a, a, a richer representation that can, uh, we can put more information on data uh, to use. Uh, and also because in some domain, as I told, uh, uh, some data are inherently structured. Uh, so for example, again uh, in uh, chemical data, but also in uh, social data and, and so on. And sometimes, but not, not always, but sometimes graphs uh, or other structure are, have some invariant that vector don't have. So for example, if you, uh, if you consider a graph uh, as a representation, for example, of a skeleton of a person, this is invariant to rotation because the same graphs can represent it in a different way of, of rotation. But this invariance can be also a problem sometimes. But in any way, uh, um, we, we, could, we could use this, we could exploit this property as uh, an effective manner to, to have some invariance in, in data. So uh, obviously, the, there are also some uh, disadvantages uh, because uh, as the data are structured, are more rigid. So are more rigid and so are more sensitive to noise. So when there is noise, the representation, uh, so for example, many data, uh, when, when we have some data with noise, are, can be represented completely, completely different from, for example, a, pro a prototype of, of the data. So this is uh, uh, less true in statistical data because we have some averaging in the data uh, and, and so on. So, uh, so this, is, this could be uh, a disadvantage because, for example, also for learning, when we need, we need data, the data we have, if they are, they are structured, uh, are, are more sensitive of, uh, about uh, noise, so the learning is more difficult. And another problem is, uh, as, uh, as I uh, have before, uh, in some, sometimes we don't have a unique representation. So the problem is dependent from the representation. So the same, uh, you, we can use the same model, for example, a, a near network for uh, learning graphs, but if we change representation, maybe the same model is not effective as, 
uh, as uh, the, the, the first representation. So it depends also on the representation. So for example, uh, in, for this reason in uh, structure pattern recognition, uh, an important part of the research is also how to represent data. It not, not only, uh, for example, uh, what architecture we, uh, we have to use uh, or something like that. Uh, also, uh, an important step is how we represent data. And we can have uh, very different results based on even some uh, small parameters in, uh, in representing data. And finally, uh, the computational complexity uh, is higher than statistical, uh, statistical methods. Uh, this because we have multiple dimension in, uh, when representing graphs, and in this case we have more, more time. But this is less true today, because we will see at the end of the, of the talk that uh, we use some, some graph representation also in uh, deep learning, uh, deep learning with deep learning techniques and is uh, somehow effectively so with, uh, uh, without a, a, a complexity uh, very high with respect to statistics. But historically, anyway, historically uh, times uh, has been always a problem when we deal for, with, uh, with graphs. And, though, and so um, the idea of this talk is to, to show you some of these uh, use of structured data in computer vision problem. So the idea, uh, some, some of these are uh, some past work of uh, um, my colleague and me, uh, and I, I want to show how to use some, some of uh, this structure. For, 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 uh, I, I, I show you here some problem in computer vision, and how we deal with some uh, kind of uh, structural data. For example, we, uh, we worked with the background subtraction problem, and we use generalized map for this. Or, for example, in object tracking, we try to use uh, graph and, and uh, graph matching techniques or graph canal techniques and so on. So uh, these are some uh, uh, past works. So I want to uh, highlight one thing that uh, uh, results from this kind of uh, uh, use are now are outdated because now uh, there are many, uh, many methods that use with uh, deep learning, with graphs, and also uh, quite efficient. Uh, and so if you, if you I, I will show you some results of this kind of, uh, of, of problems, but now uh, the results are, uh, are higher. But this is just to show you how we, uh, we think to the same problem, not with st statistical data, but with structured data. And, and some of these ide idea can be used now with the recent trends. So, um, with deep learning. Deep learn. So <clears throat> at the end, I want to show so the same, the same problem, how are the now uh, today used with, uh, with deep, deep learning. So with the same, uh, sometimes with the same uh, structured data, but in the, in the context of deep learning technique. So yes, this is uh, uh, very uh, well known. Uh, and also this is now is uh, quite out, outdated because uh, now for detecting uh, for detecting object uh, uh, you know that we use some many many deep learning uh, uh, models and uh, the idea is directly to uh, detect a moving object or for example optical flow or others um, background subtraction is quite outdated because it's not uh, more use it now uh, for, for, for detecting objects. But anyway, uh, this was uh, uh, one of the first, first tentative to detect objects. Uh, the hypothesis is to have fixed camera. So this technique uh, uh, was not, uh, uh, cannot be used for a moving camera. Uh, and uh, the basic principle is to have uh, a model, a model to uh, represent background, and by difference with this model, each frame in uh, uh, at, at at time t, 
uh, from different with model we can uh, we can find what are the what are the pixels that are moving and, and what are the uh, the pixels that are uh, similar to to background. So in this context, uh, the the idea was to denoise this kind of mask because when we do the difference. Okay, we, we found the objects, but we found also uh, many, many pixels that are noise, that are because of some little movement of cameras or some other problems that are common problem in, in the background subtraction technique. So the idea uh, is not to change the background subtraction uh, model, but we use the results of background subtraction and we want to uh, denoise uh, the mask uh, resulting from these techniques to uh, so to to have a, a more uh, clean scene. And so, what was the idea? The, the idea is to have a, a 3D structural representation of the data. So, the idea is to use masks in a 3D uh, manner. So, to have the uh, time dimension uh, as the third dimension of the of the image. Now is quite uh, classical but uh, in uh, uh, when when we have the, uh, when we uh, had this uh, idea it was quite new uh, and so the idea that uh, in in this kind of representation noise is m much more irregular much more um, have uh, some um, is not compact so the idea is to use topological information of of structured data to recognize some some part of this structure that are more irregular and uh, and not compact. And so we use in this case we use combinatorial maps. So I, I don't I don't go in uh, in details because of the time. Then uh, uh, if you if you want some details you can uh, you, you can ask me. But the, the idea of topological maps. Is a, so topological maps uh, is a, a structured data in which uh, we are more interested not in vertices but in in uh, uh, hedges that in this context are are called darts. So the, uh, the idea we have a, uh, here an example we have a graphs and the uh, equivalent structure in combinatorial maps is uh, at at side and. Uh, the idea uh, in combinatorial maps is to have more focus on uh, on uh, hedges on uh, that are called uh, darts and this kind of the uh, the link between uh, darts uh, can can uh, can can give some information on topology so when we have a, uh, a structure like this so using this kind of co combinatorial uh, uh, um, information between uh, darts, uh, so we can know uh, what is the volume, uh, what is the uh, the volume of a, of a, of this structure, and some other information. So, for example, if if uh, uh, this structure ha have some hole or, or not, so we can use these uh, uh, these maps to have some topological information. And we use this topological information to redo uh, reduce noise in, uh, um, in the video. And so we can have, uh, we use in uh, a structure in uh, three dimension. So we use 3D combinatorial maps. And so the, the pipeline, uh, what was the pipeline? Uh, oh, we have video, uh, we on, for the overall video we construct we construct the topological map of the video, and uh, the idea is to detect noise. Uh, now the noise are the white region that are uh, badly labeled because because have some topological properties uh, like uh, like uh, uh, compactness or sides or uh, something uh, some something similar. So here there is the. Uh, the algorithm. I don't go in the details, but uh, uh, the principle is uh, having the three D topological maps. We can we can recognize region in the topological maps, and we can have some properties of these regions. 
So based on these properties, we choose if the region is noise or not. And so some of some some of criterion on this region are some are simple. For example, the sides. So just the sides. So we uh, we remove all regions that are uh, less than a, a threshold. And some more complex criterion uh, use some uh, topological properties. For example, Betty, Betty numbers are some uh, uh, values that indicate in a, uh, in a geometric uh, shape uh, how many, for example, how many all we have in the region, uh, how many tunnel, uh, and so on. So, uh, for example, the second order Betty number is the number of the all, all in the, in the structure. So, for example, here is two and here is one. And other kind of, uh, uh, of Betty numbers uh, uh, can give some information of, of, on the structure. Uh, the nice uh, thing is that this number is simple to calculate on topological maps. So when we have topological map, in linear manner, we can have this, nu uh, this number and we can use this number as property of regions. And so, for example, one of the criteria that we use, it was on the Betty number of some regions. And the idea is to have to uh, detect the noise as regions that are very porous, that have many tunnels, many holes, uh, because uh, objects of interest are more compact and so uh, are, are more, uh, are, have less, uh, less number of this kind of... Uh, of, uh, of topological uh, region. So here are the results. So again, I, I, uh, I will uh, highlight that are some uh, uh, old, old, old results. So this paper was in uh, 2014, and and so um, since 2014 there are many uh, many advances, but. Just the idea that uh, uh, we could use this kind of structured data to have some good uh, good results. So uh, A1, A2, and 3 was some of a state-of-the-art method, and for some of these parameters, uh, we could have uh, we could have some good results, and we outperform some state-of-the-art at uh, 2014. So now, ch uh, changing the problem, uh, so we use structured uh, data also for people identification problem. So people identification problem is the problem to detect uh, the identity of a person even when it uh, um, exits from the scene and then re-enter again on the same cam uh, camera or, for example, enter in another camera. So the idea is to detect that is the same person uh, and, and so re-identify it. Uh, and so some, some typical problems are that uh, in, um, in different view, we have the appearance change, change a lot. So we have to find some, uh, some uh, structural representation that, that are more general and uh, more invariant to the appearance of, uh, uh, of the object. So in this case, uh, we use graphs, graphs to represent object. And then we, uh, we use some, uh, some method to compare graphs. And uh, uh, to compare graphs, there was in the, um, in the years many, many uh, proposals. Uh, first proposal was to embed the graphs in vectorial representation. So the idea is uh, at the beginning we have graphs, but we uh, we embed this in a vectorial structure, and then we use some classical statistical uh, uh, tool. So it's, uh, it's structure pattern recognition, but uh, actually <laughs> we, we transform this in vector, and then, uh, and then we use statistical pattern recognition. But this was also uh, one, uh, one of the direction that was uh, uh, very used uh, uh, before, uh, before deep learning. And uh, we can have explicit embedding. Uh, so in explicit embedding, uh, we have uh, a function that explicitly 
uh, transform a graph in a vector, but we can have also some implicit embedding. So graph kernel, graph kernel is uh, a tool for uh, implicitly uh, embed graphs in a vectorial space. But we don't know explicitly the function to embed. So the kernel is only, we only know uh, how to compare to graphs and how to have a real number given, given to graphs. So for, for, for this reason, we call implicit embedding because if there are some theorem that say that if we have this function, call it kernel, so a function that compare to data, structured data in this case, but it can be used also for st vectorial data. But if we have this kind of a, a function, so a function key that uh, for each couple of data give a real number, and we have this kind of uh, properties, so if this function is symmetric and positive definite in a, in a set of uh, data, so we can use uh, kernel uh, as vectorial, vectorial product in a, in a Hilbert space. So in fact, uh, we have data that are structured, but with kernel, we can use the comparison with graphs. We can use this, uh, so the, this kernel function as a vectorial product in, in the uh, linked hidden space. And in fact, in some problem, we don't need explicitly this function, uh, this function to embed graph in vectorial space, but we just need uh, to have this, this kind of definition, this, uh, this function. So this kind of uh, uh, techniques is called a kernel trick. So uh, instead of using vectorial product between data, we use kernel function between data. The problem of defining graph kernel is that it's not simple to verify this kind of property. This property has uh, the symmetry and the positive definiteness of the, of the function. So the idea, the solution is to extract some simple patterns uh, in which we can prove the symmetry and the positive definiteness and then we can create some aggregation of this simple function uh, to, uh, to define a kernel for graphs. So here there are some examples because the trade-off is to have some very simple function but they are informative. So for example we could use just the number of nodes, we have two graphs, we just compare the number of nodes and the, the, the kernel function, this is symmetric, and this, this is uh, 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 semi-definite positive but it's not very informative because there are many, many graphs that can be have uh, the same number of nodes but can be, uh, can be very different. Or we can use some more complex measure, for example, the maximum common subgraph. The maximum common subgraph uh, calculates uh, the, the maximum structure, so the maximum subgraph between uh, two graphs that are common between two graphs. But this is an uh, NP uh, problem so it's very complex to calculate. So this is very informative, but it's too complex to calculate. So the idea is to have some definition that is a trade-off between uh, uh, less complexity uh, and, uh, but also uh, a good inform informativity of the, of the kernel. And so we use this in some in identification problem because we uh, represent um, so the object, people in this case, with graphs. This is a case I want to show you the, the, uh, a part of the details, but the idea uh, I want to show that we can have different representation of data. For example, uh, uh, given a person, we can use, for example, uh, region adjacency graphs for represent this. Uh, what that is, uh, we segment the image, so we have the region, and the, uh, and the region are the nodes, and the links are the ad adjacency between regions. But we could use also some uh, key points of the, uh, of the image, and the key points are the nodes, and the distance are the edges. So in this case, uh, for example, we, we use this in uh, uh, some, uh, um, some proposal that we submit also this in uh, uh, some uh, 
uh, sometime, so in 2011-2013, and uh, we use this, we use different uh, representation for the same problem, and we have different results. This, is, this was, uh, I won't show you, that uh, uh, is very uh, dependent from the uh, representation. So uh, here is to show you, uh, to show you on some public data set the results, uh, the result of person uh, re-identification, and you can see that the results are very different in, uh, uh, with respect to so, uh, with respect to, uh, the representation. So now some other uh, uh, s some other uh, example of using uh, uh, graphs in uh, in some computer vision problem. Uh, so object tracking object tracking is a well known problem in which we have a video. Uh, we want detect object, but also follow their trajectories. So uh, in addition of detecting the object in each frame, the problem is to associate between frames the same object. And we, uh, we give the same, the same label in, at the same uh, object during time. So this is, uh, there are many techniques that uh, um, uh, are, are, has been proposed, have been proposed for object uh, tracking. But the basic, uh, uh, the basic is the data association between frames. The, the main problem in tracking is occlusion problem because when we have occlusion, the appearance of the region in which there is the uh, uh, occlusion, in which two objects are occluded, so the appearance is different from uh, uh, previous and future appearance and so the association is, is difficult. So the ideal solution is that for each object we want when we have the region composing of the two objects, we want ideally separate the part of region that uh, have belong to an object and the part of region that belong to the second object. And so, uh, for, for for this problem, we propose the uh, another uh, another representation. Uh, in this case, it, it was an uh, hierarchical representation uh, because an object. So we construct a pyramid of graphs. So not just the graphs for representing the object, but at different resolution level, we represent uh, the object at different resolution levels. And at different resolution level, we have region and the adjacency between regions. And so at the top of the pyramid, we can uh, uh, represent the object as one node, that is the region belonging to the object, and at different uh, uh, at different uh, resolution level, we have uh, more details and more nodes uh, to uh, represent the object. And then for each object, we can use a certain number of attributes, the position, uh, the velocity, uh, the appearance, for example, here is it was just the mean of the color of the object. So now by an example, I want to explain you how the, uh, what was the algorithm. Also, this was a, 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 an old work uh, in 2006. Uh, so it, it was my PhD thesis <laughs> work. Uh, and uh, so this is a case in which we have the occlusion. We have two objects, and uh, in the successive frame, we have one only region uh, the, uh, to represent this. And so, uh, as I said, the ideal uh, solution is to separate this region in many parts, and so we, uh, we did this uh, with this algorithm. The basic principle is uh, we start at the top level. If we can have the association, we stop the algorithm and we have the labeling of objects. Uh, and uh, uh, instead, we uh, don't have a good association at the top. We, um, we go iteratively. Uh, to uh, other uh, other resolution, trying to associate part of the region with the part of the region in the in the successive frame, uh, and so in this case we can label not the entire object but some part of the object. This is the idea. So uh, just to go um, 
into detail. For example, imagine that this was the uh, similarity between objects. Uh, we had a threshold that indicate if the similarity is sufficient or not to label this. And if it's not sufficient, the idea is to go uh, at uh, the um, bottom parts uh, to uh, have some association. And for example, at the second level, we can have some regions that are uh, matched, but some other regions are not, uh, not matched, so we can go at bottom level also to, um, to associate also these other parts. And then with, with all the labels uh, on the different uh, level of the pyramid, we can, uh, so we can separate what region are labeled uh, for one object and what region associated on second object. So this was an idea. Another idea is was using uh, particle filtering. So particle filtering was uh, used uh, it was, was very common to use for object tracking. Uh, so the idea is to generate some, uh, uh, to sample, uh, so the, the particle is represent the position of an object. And uh, so we sample and uh, we generate many, uh, many uh, proposition of this, uh, uh, this first particle. And then uh, we take only this particle that have a, a certain likelihood uh, with the with the data with the data that we see, uh, so also I, I will don't go into details, but this is the uh, this is the the algorithm the general algorithm of par uh, particle filter. So we have uh, particles, a particle swarm, and that and generate new uh, uh, new particle, and then we weight this particle based on what we see. So with the uh, probability uh, in, in the context of probability based on likelihood. So here there is an example. Just to uh, just to show you, here is not structured data. It's just uh, so uh, s statistical approach. Particle filter is a, uh, a statistical approach. But I, I show you because then we use this ide idea between uh, graph representation. So this was a video taken by uh, a state of the art uh, um, approach. So the idea you can see the swarm of particles and what are the uh, most, uh, most probably uh, uh, particles that indicate the object. So you can see that uh, 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 it can follow uh, the object with some errors. You can see also so, some, some errors sometimes when, when there is uh, some similar appearance. And just to, just to sh show you the, the idea. So particle filter was very common in object tracking, but for single object tracking. The problem is when you have a, a multiple object tracking, uh, particle filter is uh, uh, have many, uh, many issues. Uh, because uh, uh, some issues as the time complexity, because each object have many particles, and uh, uh, so you have to calculate likelihood for uh, thousands of particles for each object. And also, uh, you don't know what measure are associated with what uh, object, because you have many objects, and you don't know how to uh, associate particle with a single object. Uh, so our idea was to use the uh, particle filter, but in the context of graphs. So for us, a, a, a particle was represented by a graph. And the graph uh, represent, so here there is the representation. So uh, in this case, we use one particle to represent all the scene. So in, the, in classical particle filter uh, technique, each object have uh, his own particles here. One particle is representing all the objects in the scene. And then, and then we use the same algorithm for particle filter, but adapted for graphs. So for diffusion step, we generate multiple graphs uh, based on uh, a first graph. And then we take only these graphs that are more similar with the, the likelihood and the appearance of the scene. 
Here also there is a, a, a toy example. Uh, so we have at frame t a particle represented, uh, uh, representing a scene. We generate many uh, sample of this. So the, the generation is by adding nodes, uh, by removing nodes, by adding edges, uh, and, and so on, or by changing also attribute. And then with the, a certain definition of likelihood, uh, we try to get the more probable uh, graphs. So uh, here, the likelihood has to be uh, quite genera uh, general. Uh, it cannot be specific be because in this example, for example, you can see that the first sample was more similar. But the idea is to, uh, to let the likelihood function to keep the uh, information also from some more general case. So not ju just, for example, strict uh, equality between graphs. So this is just a toy example. Imagine that this is the most probable particle. So we can get this as solution of the, of the problem. So here also there is just a video of a result, just a, a visual uh, uh, result. So just to show you the graphs, and sometimes the, 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 uh, the method works, sometimes <laughs> less, but uh, because sometimes uh, uh, we can see uh, the separation of objects, and sometimes uh, the nodes are unique nodes to represent multiple objects, so uh, with some uh, errors. But the idea was to use this kind of representation and, uh, and particle filter that was uh, uh, very common for, for track. <coughs> and so last, last work we do, uh, uh, it was for action recognition. Action recognition problem is uh, also uh, very no, uh, well known. Uh, so we have video and we won't classify as an action. Uh, and here, uh, just to see that uh, uh, here the, uh, there is, a, 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 in addition, a one dimension that is the time. Uh, so uh, <coughs> we don't have only one graph, but we have a sequence of graphs. Uh, so uh, here, uh, our proposition was to represent for each frame a graph representing a, a person with key points. And uh, so the entire scene, uh, we use a sequence of graphs. And then we solve the problem with uh, the classical uh, technique of bag of words uh, that we call it bag of graphs. Uh, because in our case, codebook was not the words, but our graphs. So the idea is to construct a code book by, by a training set. And then uh, in uh, inference time, we have a sequence of graphs. We account the uh, statistical um, presence of this graph in the code book. And so now, then we have a vectorial representation and we classify with some classification, for example, SVM or other. Uh, this was in 2018. We use SVM. Now probably we'll use uh, some neural network. So here, again, there are some details. So how to construct code books. So for each class that is an action, we have many video, and we have me many graph sequence. The graph sequence, we account uh, the frequency of each graph in this sequence, and we take the more frequency, and, and with the clustering processing, uh, the prototype of, uh, of a sequence. Uh, so for each class, uh, we have a sequence of graphs that are the prototype of the, uh, uh, of the, graph, uh, of the graphs, the, the most important graphs in the sequence. And then in the inference time, we account the, diff, uh, the, the comparison, we compare the new graphs with the codebook. So here, the comparison was by uh, graph edit distance. The graph edit distance is a technique to uh, account the a similarity between two graphs. So here was some results on uh, with uh, this technique. And now, uh, now is uh, as in many t uh, fields, uh, deep learning was the revolution. 
And so uh, all these techniques that I, uh, I have, uh, how many times? <laughs> I, I don't know. Man. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Just to uh, show you, this wo was not my works, it's just to present you the new trends and what we are working now. Uh, because, uh, as uh, I, I said, uh, as in uh, other fields now, deep learning revolution, all, all things, and then uh, all these techniques are uh, uh, a bit outdated with uh, the use of, uh, uh, of deep learning. So now, more and more, we can use deep learning with graphs. So deep learning uh, typically is with the vectorial data, and now we can have as input of uh, deep learning graphs. So not uh, vectors or matrices, but graphs. And then there are many architectures. So I don't uh, go into details, but the, uh, the general, uh, the basic principle is we have graphs. Uh, in input, we have a graphs that is the adjacency matrix, so the relationship between nodes, and also the matrix of features. So on each node, there are many, uh, many features. And we can uh, use this in, uh, we can uh, do some convolution on these features based on neighborhood of nodes. And um, so there are many, many variants, but the principle is as we do the convolution on an image, in an image there is a grid. So when we have a pixel, we do the convolution with neighborhood of the pixel. That is always the same, is the, uh, for example, uh, three times three kernel. Here, the neighborhood is not regular, but the principle is the same. So we do the convolution between neighbor nodes and the nodes, uh, the central nodes, uh, for each node. And so for each node, we have a new representation. So at the input, we have the features on each node. At the end of uh, application of uh, uh, deep le learning architecture, we have new feature for each node. But these features taking into account also the neighborhood. So not only the features of node, but also the neighborhood. It is so they take into account also the relationship. So this is a, a, a good thing. So uh, it, it covers now the gap between stru structural and statistical uh, recognition. Because in structure, we, uh, we still have graphs, but features are uh, statistical. So, and then we can, uh, there are many problems. So, so for example, we can classify nodes. And if you want to classify the entire graphs, there are some other layers, so some aggregation part of the, in the network that aggregate the single feature of nodes in one only vector that is then classified by classical uh, multi-layer perception or uh, some, something different. So uh, we can have a node or edge uh, labeling or also graph uh, labeling, graph classification. And also now there are more and more uh, architecture that can consider also autoencoder with graphs so we have uh, uh, graphs, and the, uh, we embed in the in a, embed in a latent space this graph with the network, and also we can generate new graphs with some decoder. And finally, also the last uh, uh, the last problem that I mentioned: action recognition that I have a sequence of graphs. Also, for this, there are many architecture, deep learning architecture that take all the sequences and uh, with some convolution on, uh, on the sequence, uh, we can also uh, classify the uh, entire video represented by, uh, by graphs. So here, the, for example, the, just the last to show you uh, uh, what, uh, because uh, we are working on this. Uh, so in this case, video is represented by one only graphs that represent all the videos. So each frame is represented by a graph and the sequence represent all the, all the videos. So we have edge spat uh, that uh, take into account spatial information, spatial information, and edge that take into account uh, temporal information. And then we can use this in, uh, in uh, action recognition or, or other similar way. Uh, I don't go into details, but it's just to see that this is the classical convolution formula, but uh, the, the difference with statistical approach is the uh, B set that is not 
the uh, neighborhood as classical, the pixel that are neighborhood of the central pixel, here are the neighborhood of, of, the, of the node. So, and, and so, for example, we can use these also for object tracking because this is the whole graph of the frames in each uh, uh, nodes represent objects and edges uh, represent association between uh, objects uh, uh, during uh, uh, time dimension. And then we can use neural network, classify the nodes, and so classify the node with label uh, uh, take into account information from uh, previous frames. So, um, th these are some, uh, some application of this, uh, this kind of uh, architecture. So let me conclude the, now uh, with the combination of uh, graph and deep learning. Uh, so this combination has almost eliminated the gap that was present between statistical and structural pattern recognition. Uh, there are uh, many improvements that uh, uh, has been done, but still there are many improvements that can be uh, that are possible in this field. And uh, uh, my opinion is that we have to work more on representation, as I told, um, than architecture. So there are many architecture now. Uh, graph sage, graph attention network, and uh, etc. We can use this, but the main problem is how to represent data, especially in computer vision. Because if you use this with some uh, classical representation directly in, uh, in uh, uh, term of, of graphs, so for example, uh, compounds of network is simple, but in computer vision, uh, the representation is, is a problem. And uh, I think the space of research in this field is more on uh, how to represent data than uh, what architecture we, we, we can use. And let me finish with some advertised. Uh, so because uh, for graphs and structural data, uh, there is an association uh, of IAPR, uh, so a technical committee, the 15 technical committee, that is devoted uh, to graph-based representation in pattern recognition. And uh, uh, since one year, uh, one year I, I am the chair of this technical committee. Uh, so uh, I, invite you, I invite you to see the site. So now is the, uh, this, uh, there is two addresses because we are changing the website. So coming soon, there is the, uh, uh, the second address that uh, you, can, uh, you can take a look. And if you want, you can, uh, uh, you can register as member of this technical committee. Uh, and there are many, um, many news about this. Uh, uh, in particular, we have a, a workshop that is biannual workshop on uh, this kind of uh, uh, topics. So graph-based representation. So next workshop will be in Italy, uh, in Salerno. So, uh, so it, it's simple to go. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you will have call for papers uh, soon, and you can submit some papers. So the workshop will be in 2023. And we, in particular, in the laboratory, we have an open position exactly on uh, action recognition of spatiotemporal graph representation. So if so, some of you are interested or, or know so, some, someone that are interested, please you can, uh, <laughs> you can say them. So thank you very much for uh, your attention. It was a bit long. OK. Uh, thank you, Donatello, for your talk. Is there any question from the audience? Please. Thank you, Donatello, for the for the overview. Uh, I, I think that in, in part you already answered to my question, but just to, to to have maybe a couple of more details. So basically, in the overview, there there has been a lot of work that you presented on uh, classical approaches, uh, and and then uh, a bit of potential of what we can do now with neural networks. Yeah. 
uh, thinking in terms of your experience, how much do you think that can be, uh, I don't want to say it, but let's say recycled, so uh, 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 things that you learned from yeah. your previous work that in your opinion could go, uh, to, could be beneficial, let's say. It, yeah, you, you, yeah. You, you discussed the representation. I think there is a lot there. But yes, yes. Uh, in fact, the, this was a discussion in technical committee because uh, uh, all researchers have, have a, a good experience on graphs with classical tools, and now many groups uh, work on graphs. So uh, in, in the technical committee, the discussion was how we can use our know-how uh, in, in, the, in these new trends. And I think, yes, there is many, many rooms of uh, using uh, uh, so classical uh, way of, uh, uh, of learning in new, uh, in new, uh, in new, in new techniques, uh, especially uh, uh, again in representation, uh, because we have, uh, we, we, we have seen that the, there is not just graphs that can, can be graph sequence, graph pyramid, uh, also topological maps, for example. So uh, I, I think if we use uh, uh, this kind of representation of an, on new techniques, uh, we have richer information to give to, uh, to networks. So I, I give this could be benefit for also for the network. Is there any other question? Thank you for the nice talk, but um, I want to ask, I have now a very clear question in my mind, but is, uh, is it possible to use, like uh, in some of your approaches, uh, like disconnected graphs? Like uh, I'm just imagining like uh, action recognition with two people, but each of them is one graph, and then having something uh, which is capable to, to go on with, uh, with this. Yeah. Uh, yes. So, um, so first, I I I, I would uh, answer uh, that we can use any general graphs. So edges can uh, as uh, linked or not nodes uh, can be linked or not, and also we can put some attribute in edges to have different kind of edges. So we can, uh, for example, when we have more people, each people are graphs, but also there is an overall graph that represents scene, but with two kinds of edges. So edges represent the intra-person uh, uh, relation and inter-person relation with other kind of uh, edges. And we can put these as attributes and considering it in the convolution. OK, uh, any other question? So I have one actually. So I, um, I'm not an expert, of course, of graphs. And thank you for the very interesting talk. But some, it's possible to see in literature several uh, papers where they actually apply graph neural network to images. So just treating an image as a, as a graph, let's say. And uh, so I would like to ask you if in your experience, what, what is the advantage of something like that? And uh, how similar is this to an actually Yes. Let's say to actually use a CNN with the pixels input. Yes, yes. Uh, in fact, yes, as you say, uh, an image also is, can be considered as graphs because pixels are nodes and edges are the adjacents with pixels. Uh, but uh, you, can, uh, you can add some attributes also in the relation. Uh, this is different from images. Uh, and you can also add some relation that are not directly represented by uh, the adjacent. Uh, so you have, for example, some connection, other connection with pixels, for, for example, based on uh, color similarity uh, or something like that. So uh, in some paper that they use just for a grid, I, I think that is still interesting because it's a, a starting point to go further, for example, adding then some other properties, add, adding some other edges. So uh, still as you can use image and it works uh, as graphs, but then it could be the same architecture. It could be improved, adding some uh, some parts on edges on nodes. So again, working on the representation for uh, yeah. for the neural network. Yeah. And maybe it's interesting also the deep feature extraction at that point because maybe if you go yeah. into the network. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, uh, in some some paper already do that. That uh, in fact uh, just use you, they use graphs and uh, the deep learning part is only on features. 
So they just extract new features on, uh, on attributes and then use, they can use graphs uh, and also some other techniques that are say, some uh, path, uh, some, some other properties, some path length or clustering as we, we told. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, if there is no any other question from the audience, okay, let's thank our speaker again. Thank you. Thank you.